I've been a bit, I guess you could say, timid about using rapid chargers from other networks beyond Ecotricity, which has most of the motorway service station locations covered in the UK, in terms of charging our Ionic Electric when I'm on the go and outside of the range of our kind of home charging capabilities beyond a single charge. But recently I did get to try a rapid charger from a different company with a different manufacturer of the unit, and it turns out it was free, fast, and most surprising of all things, quiet. So let's see what it was like. Now I turned up with quite a high state of charge, but still below I think the point where the charge rate tapers off in our Ionic Electric, and judging by the numbers on the screen, so that the Ionic doesn't tell you um, the volts and the amps or the power that it's drawing from a rapid charger, and these ABB units that this pod point one was, don't show that information either. They show time elapsed and charge delivered. And that's, of course, you know, as indicated on the screen, which I think, you know, um, Bjorn Nieland and maybe others online have tested and shows isn't 100% reliable. But according to that, the car was drawing uh, at 1.46 kilowatts, which is great. Um, you know, I haven't had that kind of power rate from Ecotricity chargers. So that could be because, you know, I'm getting unlucky and happening to hit the ones that are sort of nerfed in some way. There's, you know, various things written online that, that some of them weren't installed correctly, perhaps, and, um, you know, are, are stuck on some testing mode kind of power delivery. Who knows? Um, I have visited a lot of Ecotricity chargers, um, both in the Leaf that we had before and in our Ionic Electric, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think they just, you know, they don't deliver much more than 60 kilowatts. You can share your experience in the comments if you are different. Um, but it was nice to see 46 kilowatts. The other benefit of this charger was that um, an Audi e-tron pulled up. I wasn't even aware that there was a kind of hybrid Audi. Apologies for my ignorance there. And it plugged into the AC while I was using the DC CCS on this pod point rapid charger, this ABB unit in the little. And uh, we both charged fine. It didn't kind of interrupt my charge. It didn't seem to slow, slow down my charge rate. And uh, I happened to visit this same rapid charger again when there was a leaf charging on the Chadamo and was able to plug in my DC CCS while the DC Chadamo was connected for them. And again, it charged the car, although then it was, even though I was at a lower state of charge at about 40%, it uh, was charging my car at about 36 kilowatts. So perhaps because it was connected to two DCs, it was lower. It was difficult to tell. The, the screen was showing some uh, exclamation mark error about the leaf. So I don't know if its charge limit was on and it had stopped charging or there was an error or something. Um, it, it's one of the issues with these rapid chargers, actually, that you often don't know what's going on while it's working, You know whether it's going to work before you start it and these kind of things. It, it, there's a long way to go in terms of you know the the friendliness um, of the information that they give and the general sort of user experience with these rapid chargers. One of the things I was most surprised about though, having mainly used Ecotricity rapid chargers in the past, all of the Ecotricity chargers that I've used, both when we had our Leaf using DC Chadamo as the plug, and now in our Ionic Electric using DC CCS as the plug, there's this really high-pitched whine comes out of the chargers, which I've shown in a previous video. And, you know, it's actually one of the ways for me to tell if it's working. It's, it's an unpleasant sound, um, but, it, you know, at least you know that it's kind of connected and it started working. So this ABB one, this pod point in the, the little supermarket car park, um, the free charger, I wasn't actually sure that it was working. I kind of went up and checked in the car a few times to see if the lights were flashing and to see if the countdown was working on the instrument cluster, just to see if it was working because it was completely silent. only when a second car plugged in did the fans come on and even then there wasn't the high-pitched whine so that was interesting to see. Ecotricity, great though it was that they got in in the early days, their units are a bit out of date as they've admitted themselves. I have a video about you know how their new network is coming probably in spring 2019 onwards um, with 150 kilowatt power chargers and so on. Um, their, their DBT units, um, these units, they kind of retrofitted the CCS, the units were a bit kind of, you know, first to market anyway, and they're aging and they're unreliable and, well, perhaps unreliable in terms of software as well. So, you know, separate from the power electronics design and so on of inside these units, which I think does vary, given their kind of varying reliability and the varying levels of power they seem to be able to deliver to the cars. I was interested just to see in this ABB unit, and again, I've seen one before, but I don't think it had this, it had these kind of like rubber... Um, sort of uh, gaskets, these rubber seals, around where you put the 
plugs back in, the three different plugs, the AC, the DC channel, and the DC CCS. So hopefully that would keep sort of rain from, you know, infiltrating into the actual connector pins, which I think can cause errors when they've been left out or, you know, left uh, pointing up so that, you know, rainwater will soak into them. So that was nice to see and a sort of, you know, another little design touch. Um, I did look up and the companies behind, I think it's, it's French uh, company DBT, the parent company, and with ABB, I think they're a Swiss company. And uh, ABB certainly does a lot of, you know, power electronics. Um, DBT does, does various things with, you know, power uh, systems on site and so on. So, you know, they clearly are into building large scale, you know, hardware and so on. So, um, you know, maybe it's just sort of incrementalism in, in how they develop them. But, you know, these units are not, you know, radically different each time. There's from both, I think, DBT and ABB, so these fairly big companies behind the scenes of whoever's kind of the, the sort of customer front end of these charging networks, they do seem to be developing sort of 150 kilowatt, 350 kilowatt um, power chargers, and uh, ABB, I think, has gone for with, um, it's been selected by the Ionity network that's coming across Europe, which has exclusively the DC CCS plugs on them, um, and there'll be 350 kilowatt power, so you know, there's, there are things going on, but, you know, as an electric car driver who just wants to be able to get about and, and go wherever I need to go, um, the pace of evolution seems seems quite slow. I'm sure there are large amounts of money involved, but still the pace is quite slow. I should say, it's been suggested in the comments, and I do plan to do a kind of charger crawl, as it were, at some point, and go and try out all of the rapid chargers that I can within reasonable distance um, to reach in our Ionic Electric, and see what they're like, and compare kind of, you know, the conditions of access, um, the quality of the charges, the information you get before you turn up, the information you get while charging, charging rates, prices, that kind of thing. So that's coming in a future video when I have time to kind of visit all those different locations. W one of the reasons why I've been hesitant to do a kind of charger crawl and kind of network comparison or charging network test is, you know, in the early days of having our leaf, I did start to accumulate these kind of RFID cards. So I had one from Ecotricity, um, which were free um, at the point of use before but um, you know you had to sort of show an RFID card you had to sign up and they sent you one in the post and I got a Source East one I can't even remember that network probably doesn't exist anymore it's been subsumed into another network and then um, I still have an active charge your car one as well so I, I've been quite hesitant to kind of either sign up to you know monthly subscription rates and um, or you know wait to have cards posted to me and things so I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration of the free ABB unit being operated by Podpoint out of the little supermarket for free um, that I was able to test. I was very happy with it. And um, yeah, so subscribe if you'd like to see more videos, including this forthcoming one about charging networks at some point. And thanks for sticking with me and watching and bye for now.